Good morning. Barry Bryson here. Uh, thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. Um, we're going to continue our introduction of our theme today. Take one more session to talk about the, the Psalms before we really get into the text of Psalm 1 as a key to understanding Hebrew poetry. What I haven't talked about before are the, the, um, the, um, the musical terms and also the superscriptions in the Psalms. This Psalm, as it stands at the beginning of the entire selection, and as an introduction to the entire selection of Psalms, collection of Psalms, contains neither. So we don't have any um, musical notations. The three um, that you'll read most frequently are Salah, um, which is about the music itself, it seems, or Maskil or Miktam, which are found in the superscription and describe a kind of music. We don't know what Salah means. It could mean repeat. It could mean pause. It could mean crescendo. It could mean trill. It could mean anything. But it is a musical notation that finds itself in the text of many of the Psalms and we don't know what it means, but it serves us as a as a reminder that this is these are the words of songs, that this is about music, this is about emotional expression, and an emotional offering to God, an emptying of our hearts uh, to God, uh, and in in so doing, praising God as God, and and we're we're talking about music and how important music is, and. Maskil and Miktam are the kinds of music that are often mentioned. A Maskil of David, you know. We'll know who the who the author is, and we'll know what kind, what style it is. Does it mean maybe it's a round, or or maybe it's a fugue, or 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 or, or maybe it's you know to be more emotionally uh, sung, more free form, or maybe. Maybe it's as simple as saying something is a polka or it's a waltz. It might those might be time signatures. Um, we don't know, but again, they remind us that this is music that's supposed to be sung a certain way. And when you when you have the word sila in the text and then masculine or miktam in the superscription, we're reminded that the music itself is important. That the writer of the psalm wanted it sung in a certain way to express the words that he's written, that you cannot just throw any old tune to the words and have the words be as meaningful. Um, so in our English hymn books, um, in the back of those hymn books, in every hymn book I have, you, you, you have a list, a list of songs by meter. And you can look those songs up and then you can swap out words with the meter. And a, a, a good example of this is um, is Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, uh, which is one of the most important of English hymns, has a common meter. Many songs you can switch them out, but you can't really uh, with any other tune and have it sound like Amazing Grace. And in fact, you can sing Amazing Grace to the tune of the theme song uh, from Gilligan's Island, or the the old. Um, country song ghost riders in the sky but that doesn't mean you're singing amazing grace the way it ought to be sung the music itself is important and i think mick tom and Maskil and sila remind us that the music itself is important and i wish i knew what this music sounded like i don't but i wish i did i wish i knew what david's voice sounded like when he sang these songs or what his lyre sounded like when he plucked it I wish I knew what the chorus sounded like when Cora stood up to direct. Let's talk about the superscriptions for just a moment. Many of these psalms have superscriptions. The first is Psalm 3, Psalm of David when he fled from Absalom his son. That's in the Hebrew text. That's there. That's part of scripture. That's in the Hebrew text. And we should treat it as inspired as we do the rest of the text. And, they, and so for many of these songs, they give us historical background. They'll give us, they'll, they'll tell us the author. And there are a variety of authors. Um, the, the Sons of Korah um, are, are one that, that, that we see. Asaph wrote 
the second most songs of any of the songs in here. Asaph songs sound like Asaph. You can read them and know it's a song of Asaph. You know, he writes songs, wisdom psalms, which ask the question, why? <laughs> why, why are good people suffering when bad people are prospering? And yet ultimately songs of trust. And so when you look at these superscriptions, pay attention to them. They're not a throwaway line. They're important before you read the song at all that you read the superscriptions. Okay, we're going to be getting into the text next time, talking about the different kinds of rhyme. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.